Okay, welcome back. Now I'm gonna do a problem. It's called tension in a chain on a cone. So you get a chain of a certain length or a certain radius. It doesn't have to be a chain. It could be a rope, a string, or anything pretty much. And then you can put it on a cone, and the cone has a half angle of theta, and then you can have the chain sitting on it. So let's say the chain's radius is given. The radius of the chain is gonna be R. And then you can have it sitting on the cone, and then you can spin the cone at a certain frequency, right? You can spin the cone at a certain frequency, uh, angular frequency omega, right? Angular, uh, angular velocity omega, right? In radians per second. And then I can say, what is the tension in the chain as a function of the angle theta, as a function of the radius r of the chain, and as a function of the uh, angular velocity omega, right? So let's develop those equations. So then let's uh, do the free body diagram on the chain right here. Imagine this is the chain or rope, right? And then you have here uh, uh, the surface is, um, the surface that it's resting on is inclined at an angle theta. So it's gonna be pushing up at a normal force N. And then you have the weight of the chain, chain MG, right? So then if we just take a certain element of the chain, right, at this side right here, then we can say the normal force is up and then the, if I'm taking a certain element of the chain, the length of that element is delta x, right? It has a certain mass delta m, right? Uh, so then uh, it's gonna have a weight delta mg, right? And then uh, what is this angle gonna be here, okay? What is this angle um, here? Well, if this angle is theta, which angle is that? So then that would be this angle right here, right? Uh, the angle of the cone that's coming down like this, right? So if we break this up, right? So this theta is going to be the same as this theta, right? This theta. And then this is going to be 90 minus theta. And then this is going to be theta, right? So that's going to be theta right there. Okay. And then if we take a look at what's happening to the tension in the chain, if you, now I'm going to take a top look at this, a top view. Right, top view, it looks like this. Right, so we've taken a certain element here of length dx, delta x, right? Uh, and then it has a mass uh, delta m, right? And then so we have here the tension is pulling on it this way, t, and then t, right? So the tension in the chain is pulling on it in a plane that is perpendicular, it's a horizontal plane, right? So it's, if you have a certain element of uh, delta x, the tension is pulling this way and pulling this way. So now if I take a look at that from the top view, it looks like this and it looks like that, right? And then the normal force is pushing out on it like that, and then the weight mg is down, you see? So you have to visualize this in three dimensions. You have tension t, tension t, right, coming out like this. Then you have the normal force this way, then you have the mg down, right? So you have T, T, and then in this picture, the normal force would be kind of, it's a little bit hard to visualize it, but the normal force is coming this way. So in this picture, the tension T is kind of do, doing this, and then here, this is doing tension T. So this is a, we call this a side view of what is happening, and in this one, we call it the top view, right? So in the top view, the best, the only forces you can kind of visualize in the top view is the tension, right? So then what's going to happen? Uh, we can, we can uh, draw this here, so the, if you take uh, the length, um, if you take a line from the edge of this to the center, and if you take a, a line from this, this is a delta x, right? So this is delta x, and this is, would be the line going all the way to the center of the chain. Like, the chain looks like this right here. X, right, and then I break this up into half. This is going to be alpha, and then this one I can define as alpha. This alpha and this alpha are going to be the same, the angle. In other words, depending on the length that I've chosen, this is going to be uh, subtending a certain angle, alpha here, and then the tension t is going to be inclined downward with the same angle, alpha, right? This alpha. And then on the other side, you're going to have an alpha, and then the tension t is going to be inclined and then alpha. So then what's going to happen, t cosine of alpha and t cosine of alpha cancel each other, and then the t sine of alpha is inward. 
So it provides the necessary centripetal force in order for the chain to go in a circle with the cone, right? So then we're going to say here 2t and then sine of alpha, 2t sine of alpha is going to be equal to the inward component of the force here, t sine of alpha, and then here this is going to be t sine of alpha. So 2t sine of alpha, so that's going to be inward, right? 2t sine of alpha, and then n cosine of theta is going to be outward. It's pushing it outward. So it's fighting against the centripetal force provided by the tension in the chain, right? So 2t sine alpha minus n uh, cosine theta is equal to, it's equal to the mass times the velocity squared over the radius, right? Which, what mass? The mass of that small piece of the chain, right? So delta m times the velocity squared over the radius, okay? So the next thing I'm going to argue is that since my length delta x is small, the angle alpha is going to be small, right? And if the angle alpha is small, then the sine of the angle is going to equal to the angle, right? This is the small angle approximation. Sine of x is x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 5 over 5 factorial. When the angle is small, then these uh, terms disappear, and then the sine of the angle is approximately equal to the angle itself. So then I can just say here 2t alpha minus n cosine theta is equal to dmv squared over r, okay? So then uh, what's going to happen? The next thing I'm going to say is that the mass of that piece is equal to dm is equal to the linear mass density of the chain times the thickness dx, right? The linear mass density, depending on whatever the mass of this the chain is divided by its length, right, times the uh, dx, right, then I'm going to say dx is equal to r times the angle subtended by that, right, so dx is the, uh, the arc length of that, and then this is equal to the radius of the chain times twice the angle alpha, okay, so then I can uh, I substitute that into there, so then I have here 2t alpha minus n cosine theta is equal to lambda. Uh, I can... Okay, so I'm, now the next thing to do is to do the vertical component of the normal force. I can say n sine of theta is equal to dmg, right? The vertical component n sine theta, that's equal to dmg, okay? So then you have here n sine theta is equal to delta mg. Then I can make the same argument. I can say delta m is equal to lambda delta x, so lambda r2 alpha. So then I have here lambda r2 alpha times g. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna substitute that normal force here. I'm gonna say n is equal to lambda r2 alpha g divided by sine theta and then substitute it into this end, and then I get rid of the normal force, because I'm interested in the tension in the string, the tension in the chain, right? So then I have here 2t alpha minus lambda r 2 alpha g, and then I have here cosine theta over sine theta, okay? That's equal to lambda r 2 alpha v squared over r, right? And then I can write the cosine, of, uh, alpha, uh, cosine theta over sine theta as tangent of theta in the denominator. Tangent of theta, okay? So then I, uh, I can express it this way. And then what's going to happen? Well, alpha and the alpha and the alpha is going to cancel. That means ultimately our solution to the tension T does not depend on the alpha, the angle subtended by this, right? So it all disappeared. So then this one canceled. The alpha canceled, the alpha canceled, the alpha canceled, okay? So then I can solve for the tension T here. Okay? Uh, the two also will cancel. The two and this two and this two will cancel. Okay, what else is canceling? The R here is canceling with the R there, right? So then I'm, I have here, Tension T is equal to 
lambda b squared plus, and then this one goes to the other side, lambda r g divided by tangent theta, okay? So then I can factor out the lambda, and then I have here b squared plus r g over tangent theta, okay? And then what is lambda? Uh, lambda is the mass of the chain divided by the circumference of the chain, right? So then it's going to be a mass divided by its length. So then the length will be 2 pi r, right? 2 pi times the radius. So we have here v squared plus rg divided by tangent of theta, okay? So depending on what is given in the problem, If you are told, let's say the angle of theta is 30 degrees, right? let's say the mass of the chain is given as 5 kilograms, let's say the radius is given as uh, 2 meters, let's say the velocity is given to you, the velocity, uh, the spin velocity uh, at the edge of the chain, right? So the velocity is given as, uh, let's say, 6 meters per second, and the angle is given as 30, so then what's the tension in the string? Tension uh, is going to be the mass, 5 kilogram, divided by by 2 pi times the radius 2, and then the velocity squared plus uh, r2 times 9.8, divided by tangent 30, okay? So then the tension in the string is going to be Okay, now what if the, uh, the angle of the cone was 60 degrees, what would happen? I'm assuming then, I'm assuming that if the angle of the cone is 60, I'm assuming the radius doesn't change. The radius stays uh, uh, 2 meters. So that means if I put this chain on the cone, it's not going to go in as deep, right? This one, since 30 degrees, the chain is going to go down further. This one, I didn't change the radius of the chain, so as soon as I put it in, it's going to kind of stay at the top, right? It's going to go like this, whereas this one, it's going to go in deeper into the cone, right? Something like that. So all I'm doing is changing the angle. So then what's going to happen? Tension T, 5 over 2 pi times 2. 6 squared plus 2 times 9.8 over tangent of 60. So does that increase the tension or decrease the tension? So what happens? If the angle is larger, keeping everything else the same, the tension in the string decreases. Why is that? Okay. If the angle is larger, then the normal force is up at a higher angle, right? Uh, mg, right? So what happens? Well, because the normal force is at a higher angle, right, most of the normal force is going into supporting the weight of the chain, mg. Little bit of the normal force is going into the outward the centrifugal force, right? The outward force on the chain. So the tension doesn't have to be as strong. The tension on the string doesn't have to be as strong in order to cause the chain to rotate with the cone. Right? Whereas when it's 30 degrees, majority of the normal force is this way, right? is uh, more horizontal. Little bit of the normal force is going into supporting the weight, right? but a lot of it is going into pushing outward. So the tension has to be stronger in order to cause the chain to rotate with the cone. right? So that kind of makes sense. As this one goes down and down and down, right? then it just kind of sits like this, almost like a pole, right? If you put the chain on it like this, then what is the tension as the angle approaches zero? Okay, as the angle approaches zero, this approaches zero, so it approaches infinity. So in other words, if you simply put the chain on the post and the radius of the post is uh, three meters, right? Uh, so imagine the radius of the post is uh, two meters, and then imagine you put the chain on it, what's going to happen? The, chain, the likelihood is that chain wants to just fall. So if you want to make this uh, rotate at a velocity of 6 meters per second, 
it has to have a lot of tension there, right? So the tension, the tension approaches infinity if the cone becomes looking more like a pole, okay? It, it, it requires an infinite tension in order to make the chain rotate around the, the post. So since no, um, since no chain can support an infinite tension, most of the chains are just simply going to fall, unless there's friction here. Unless there's friction, what's going to likely happen is that the chain is going to fall because no chain is going to have an infinite tension. Okay. Now, in some problems, you know, instead of giving you the velocity, they might give you the rotational velocity, omega. Right? Omega, they might say, is one radian per second. So the cone is rotating at one radian per second. So how does the equation change? Well, then we're going to just say velocity is equal to velocity is equal to r omega. So then you, when you do this, you're just going to have r squared omega squared. r squared omega squared. So then the equation changes slightly. Then the r can be uh, distributed in here. You have r omega squared, and then it can dis be distributed in there. And then you have g tangent of theta, right? So this can be used in the cases where the angular velocity of the cone is given, right? So then uh, you kind of slightly change it. So then you just say here tension, uh, five kilograms over two pi. The radius is 2, and then if the omega is given as 1 rad per second, so then we just say 1 squared plus 9.8 over tangent of 30, then you solve that. 3.1 newtons, okay? So now you see the expression of the tension T in the chain, given in terms of the, either the omega or the velocity. So you see a good example in this uh, uh, problem of where we use uh, the small angle approximation and we look at the top of the chain, the, the two tensions this way, and we break it up into the piece of the, ch the chain and then we express it as dm is equal to lambda dx. So it's a really good problem where a little bit of calculus comes into there, a little bit of trig using the, the small angle approximation and also some circular motion and uh, Newton's laws set up where we break it up into uh, x component and y component, okay? Thank you very much.